Hey everyone, welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so glad you're with us today. I hope you're having a great day and that you are going to be um, encouraged today with our podcast. I'm super excited to introduce you to our guest. Her name is Sherry Seligson and she is an author. She's a speaker. She's a homeschool mama. Um, she does lots and lots of exciting things. And so we're going to talk to her today. And um, I am, I'm really, I, I love this type of, uh, of interview, or I should say of guests, though I love all of my guests, but Sherry's one who has been through homeschooling with her kids. And she has just a really neat story about where God has taken her and where she came from and what he's done through her homeschooling. And so um, I'm excited to introduce you to her. So welcome Sherry to the podcast. Hi, Yvette. Glad to be here. Yeah. Tell us, tell us about you. Tell us about your family. Well, um, my husband and I have four children. Um, We homeschooled them K through 12. They are all out of school. I still have my hair and most of my sanity. (laughs) They've made it through college and are actually productive adults. Hmm. Um, And before we had kids, I worked at Walt Disney World's Living Seas Pavilion as a marine biologist and then left that to what I consider a promotion to become a mom. Oh, oh, I love that you say to a promotion because marine biology, I mean, that is a pretty amazing career to have. I love... (laughs) I, I love the ocean, and um, and so you got to really experience God's creation in a whole different way that most people don't get to do. Yeah, it was it's amazing. It was definitely not as glamorous as people tend to imagine it, but definitely fun, definitely uh, fascinating. And the more I studied it, the more I saw God's created hand mm-hmm. in in our world. Just a beautiful testimony to Him. That's awesome. And so God has used that in some pretty amazing ways. It, uh, for you as a homeschool mom, but for you also as just a homeschool leader, as a speaker, as an author. And so you've done some pretty neat things that help mamas like myself who are in the middle of homeschooling right now and in the thick of it. And we're always looking for good curriculum. We're always looking for the best thing to direct our kids' hearts towards Christ. And so you have been able to do that. Um, but one of the things that you love to do is you like to encourage moms who struggle with the feeling of putting their lives on hold because some may have seen you as that. So I would love for you to tell that story of you quote unquote, putting your life on hold, even though, like you said, you actually ended up getting a promotion. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's something that we have as our, we imagine as a young parent or a young uh, single person before we have kids, we have this career because society is telling us that it's valuable to have a career and that being a stay at home mom is, is, lesser is settling for less is not good enough and i i just am that is completely wrong in my opinion completely wrong one of the best mission fields we have is our children our family Mm -hmm. um one of the best ways to impact the world is through that and when i left my job um most of the feedback i got from coworkers, friends even some family members was you're nuts what are you doing (laughs) putting your career on hold like that and and we tend to do that we kind of think that we've got this plan that we're going to do in our lives that's significant and then we mm-hmm. become parents then we decide we're going to homeschool which you know again like that reinforced the fact that my friends and family thought i was nuts <laughs> um but we um but then we kind of see that as a sidetrack to what what maybe god has for us what we're going to do that's great and mighty in this world and um so we we take this time. We count down the years. We mark off the calendar. I've got five more years, four more years until my last one's graduated. And then, or we even feel the pressure of, you know, putting them in public school or private school or part-time because we just want to do something that we can say we're significant. Mm -hmm. Um, But in my, in my experience, um, if I did nothing else, but um, like people say, what's on your bucket list? And I've been to lots of fun places. I've been to New Zealand. I've been to uh, Iceland. I've been to all over. Um, my bucket list top checkoff box is being a mom Hmm. and and being with my kids. So I've been able to check that box as I've been doing it because that's, that was, that's the best experience I've ever had. That's the best place I've ever been. And, um, and God used that time to build skills in me, uh, both spiritually in my growth um, and academically. Uh, I learned so much about (laughs) history that I never learned when I was in public school. Right. Um, and that's a, that's a whole entire topic right there. How much I believe homeschool moms and dads are some of the smartest people I know because mm-hmm. we get the enjoyment of learning with our children and filling in a lot of those gaps that we mm-hmm. had um, with the excitement of teaching them. And so 
he felt he taught me god used this to teach me grammar he is <laughs> that i did not have writing skills um, speaking skills uh, encouragement talking with my kids teaching other kids because once you get pegged as a scientist in the homeschool community <laughs> you just kind of get volunteered to do um right. <laughs> like co-ops and we teach this class and what, so which i loved but um it, it built skills in me that now i'm using for the day so i'm able to I have the uh, blessing of writing curriculum for Apologia Educational Ministries. Um, I get to teach. Um, I get to film instructional DVDs that help um, go along with those courses. So we go on location. We talk about the science that's happening wherever we are. Um, and and um, those skills that I learned going through that process of, of being a homeschooler, being a mom, um, were built in me because of that. I could not be doing what I'm doing today if it wasn't for that amazing experience. And so I believe that God uses his plan A. It's not his plan B or our plan. It's a plan A of bringing the children he has into our families and then utilizing that experience to build in us. Humility, mm -hmm. to build them, um, whatever those skills are that we can then use to not only pour into our children, but but prepare us for the next chapter that he has for us. Because believe it or not, you may not believe it at, at certain times in your life, they will be grown <laughs> one day. They actually will graduate. Mm. They actually will become adults. And then um, and then what does God have for us at that point? And, and I know he's got great things for all of us. And it doesn't mean we're all going to be like involved in politics or, you know, become famous, whatever's. But we have, we have a responsibility to use our time well and pouring into our extended family, pouring into our children and their children, and then whatever else God opens up to us. And so I, I count the experiences that I had as a homeschool mom as part of that preparation, that it wasn't a sidetrack. It was part of his plan A. And I continue to see, oh, I'm so glad I learned that. I would not have learned yeah. that had I not homeschooled. So. Right. Um, just as an encouragement to moms to continue building yourself as you're building your children. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. I love that you call it plan A too, because I think oftentimes we feel like, oh, you know, we wanted to do this. We wanted to do that. And now I'm stuck at home with these kids and I'm having to homeschool them. And, and we feel like our work is insignificant. And it's, it's not. not. And the time goes by so quickly, which I'm sure you will relate to that. Uh, you know, our oldest is 13 and I cannot believe that she's already 13 years old. I mean, she was just born yesterday. How can she right. be 13? Right. And I realize more and more how short our time is with our kids. I mean, it goes by in a flash and, and I'm sure you experienced that with your kids. And now God is using all of the things that you did before you had kids and took the things that you did from being a mom and homeschooling them. And now he's done something different with you, but he's still using all of the gifts and talents and abilities that he created you to have to impact his kingdom. And there's just right. no greater work than that. Yeah. It's not wasted time. It's not, it's, it's mm -mm. the best, the best thing we can do. And, and again, it's the top of my bucket list. I have, you know, things I'd like to do places I'd like to see, but that's my bucket list topic. So um, yeah, it's, it's worthwhile. And there are days, I mean, I don't know, I, I'm going to ask the Lord one day about this, but how time can feel like it's fleeting. And then there are days or weeks or months where time feels like it's standing still. I mean, there were those moments <laughs> with our kids during those little years. And I felt like time was not moving. There was no progress. There was no, like I was going to be in this moment forever. Um, yes. and, you know, I think that that's when we need a, uh, even if it's an hour break um, or a, a perspective change, a friend we can mm -hmm. chat with because within that tiny little moment of that little parenthetical moment in our mm -hmm. life uh, where we feel like all we're going to do is clean up liquids coming out of children. <laughs> <laughs> if they do um, that, we feel like that's going to be our life forever. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a tiny little moment within the tiny little period of those young years, within the tiny little period of having them at home, within the tiny little period of my life that yeah. God's eternal timeline um, and he's placed us in this spot for this time, for this period, um, that perspective helps me to say, okay, one more diaper. Okay. One more, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, spilled 
honey with glass or whatever. Oh gosh. <laughs> honey is um, the worst. Oh no. It is, especially in the glass containers. Come on. <laughs> yeah. And so I think that it, a lot of it's our perspective. Um, but if we can get a vision of that, that God's got a plan for us mm -hmm. and he doesn't say, whoops, well, this is happening. I'll change the plan. Then it helps us have that right direction, that right perspective to keep moving, keep moving forward with what he has for us today. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What are some things since, so you homeschooled your kids from kindergarten through 12th grade, all four of them. How many years apart are they? They're each two years apart. I married okay. an engineer. <laughs> so <laughs> Four kids in six years, and wow. um, and then God just we we didn't know how many we were going to have, and God just said that's your four is your is your number, and so um, yeah, we we started with preschool with our first one, and um, thought well I can't run preschool, I know my colors, I know my numbers, <laughs> and every year we would just pray and reassess, and it's usually like this time of year we're like, we're, we're recording right now, it's just now February. This mm -hmm. is that. I would like check on the computer. How much is it for private school? <laughs> um, but every year we'd reassess, we would pray and God just said, keep going. Eventually our children said, keep going. They mm. enjoyed it. They caught it. Um, and so, yeah, we went all the way through K through 12 and it was, they were lumped together, but the spacing is, was enough to where I could only um, teach certain groups. I mean, I had older mm. and younger enough to where we yeah. could do everything with all of them. Um, it was like spinning plates sometimes, but it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which life is spinning plates anyway. Yes, um, yes. How did that build relationships between you and your kids and between your children and, and you know, them as siblings? I can tell you um, the, the perspective I have now, um, watching my kids, watching ourselves with our kids, that that's one of the best um, benefits of homeschooling mm -hmm. is they are building relationships with you as parents mm -hmm. and with each other. You know, if you think about the artificial environment of a brick and mortar school where kids are parsed into grades and the fifth grade class goes on a field trip to the zoo and they watch the elephant give birth or something. And they're with kids that they're probably never going to see again the rest of their lives. And, mm -hmm. and they're not, when you're as a homeschool family doing something like that and you know, the van, breaks down and it's raining and mom's crying and the kids end up getting lollipops at the store because they're waiting for the, you know, <laughs> to come. my kids have memories of that, that they've shared the, the shared memories yeah. have built their relationships. Oftentimes, you know, I get the beauty of watching them come home for Christmas and we're all sitting around having something to eat or something to drink. And, and they're just chatting and reminiscing about mm. their experiences. And some of them are misadventures <laughs> um, and some of them are just, you know, inside jokes, movies they've seen together, um, things that have, you know, happened in their lives, but they have shared memories yeah. that they get to enjoy together and relive together. And that builds their relationships. They've been um, guided gently, sometimes not so gently yeah. to get along. Um, and even with us, we get to spend time with them through those challenging years, through those uh, questioning years, wrestling. And so, uh, and it's not been easy, but it has been beautiful to see the pursuit. You know, God pursues us. He doesn't let us go. We need to pursue them. Sometimes they don't want it. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. or at least they don't look like they want it. You know, when you give them a hug and they kind of go, oh, mom, they still love it. Tell them you love them, even though they may kind of get the eye roll. They, they, I know that mom. Well, I want to tell you again, because <laughs> they need to hear it. They need to know that we're pursuing them and it builds a relationship that is just beautiful. That's wonderful. Um, that never ends. I mean, and again, yeah. they'll call each other. When I hear that they're going out together, two of them are going to go get dinner. I'm like, oh, I'm just so excited about that. So yeah. that will happen. And there were days where, you know, stop touching me. Do you see he's touching? You know, that, that was our life a lot too. Um, you know, our, my children, just like me, we're sinners. So we have to learn that, but, um, but just, it's, it's a beautiful thing. The relationship building is such a blessing. And because we homeschool, we're able to foster that. Yeah. I love it. I, I often tell our girls and, you know, you hear it all the time. We're raising adults. We're not raising children. And I desperately want my girls to grow up to have a great relationship and to be the best of friends. Cause I tell them right now they're almost five years apart. And so they feel like there's such a big gap in their age. And it does seem that way, you know, between eight years old and 13 years old, there is a big difference, but I keep telling them when you're adults, when one of you is 25 and the other is 30, you're, there's not going to be a gap there. That gap completely closes. You know, I'm friends with many, many moms who are 10 years younger than me or five years younger than me. And 
it doesn't matter. I don't ask first, how old are you? You know, and if you're five right. years older than me, I'm sorry. I can't to your mom friend. <laughs> And, um, and yeah. so I, that is one of our greatest desires for our girls is that they will grow to have a deep, deep bond with one another because they share life together. That's what they get to do because of homeschooling. And it's, That's it's right. such a blessing. <clears throat> um, let's take a quick break. And then when we come back, I want to talk about how you transition your children from elementary into the middle school years and then into high school. Cause you've been through that. And I know some of us are in the middle of trying to figure that out. So I would love to talk about that when we get back from the break. Sound good? Okay. Some water. <laughs> I used to um, <clears throat> frustration during those harder moments. When dad and I are dead, that's all you guys are going to have is each other. <laughs> I want you to be friends. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> Just catch it. Yeah. Well, you know, we, my mom got real sick last year and um, we actually didn't know if she was going to make it through and, and praise God she did, but mm. it, I have one sister. And so my, unfortunately I'm about 2,500 miles away from my mom right now. So my sister definitely took on the, the brunt of that work. I was able to go back for a few, um, a few weeks to help out, but, but I couldn't, but it, it, that became a reality for me that, you know, if mom dies and eventually she's going to, and eventually dad's going to, you know, they're both in their seventies now. We're all we have left for family. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's My right. sister and I, you know? Um, and so, yeah, it's important. Um, okay. Okay. So we are back with Sherry. Um, Sherry, I want to talk about how you transitioned your kids from the elementary grades into middle school and then into high school? Because it seems a little bit overwhelming to me. Brooklyn, my oldest, she is in seventh grade right now, um, if, if we must label her with a grade. And, um, and I'm, it, that part didn't seem as overwhelming as it does transitioning her into the high school years with transcripts and all these things that need to be taken care of. Um, how did you deal with that with your kids? Um, besides panic, um, <laughs> we, you know, we, we, it, each child was different. You know, we actually, after having gone through the process with our oldest, everybody would say to me, oh, well, you've completed this transition. You've done it all the way through. You've got it figured out. And I realized no, because each child is so different. Their, their direction was different. Their giftedness is different. And so the, the, mechanics of how our courses that you know, we had them doing and, and their experiences, whether they would work or not, whether they would dual enroll, it was different with each child. So that, that's going to look different. And that's what we want. Because remember, we're homeschooling them. We get that opportunity mm -hmm. to adjust their needs based on their needs, their direction, what God has for them. If we want to do the same thing with all of them, let's just put them in a big classroom full of 25, 30 kids and do the same thing. And so it's going to look different. But there are some things that we can do to help our kids in the transition that's kind of across the boards the same, at least in theory or, or um, for the most part. Like in, as they ag exit elementary school years and enter the middle school years, we're talking about adolescence. And it's interesting that adolescence kind of falls at the same time as, I mean, physically, emotionally, <laughs> um, mentally, de developmentally, um, academically, there's a lot of changes going on. And so if you mm -hmm. imagine um, your child having that, it, it's kind of like, I mean, we have to cut them some slack, first of all. Their mm -hmm. bodies are growing. Their bodies are doing things. They're like, what's happening to me? They're having to, they're, they're developmentally, their brains are being able to transition from understanding only concrete information to understanding abstract ideas and they're they're questioning more which is good mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes not so great but good um, because they're trying to process what this world is who is you know what's truth what is how do I fit into this um, so they're going to have awkward feelings they're going to have questions they're going to be maybe inward they're not going to know how to respond and we have to have that dialogue that's when we pursue them gently um, and give them space. And we also work on academically the transitions that are occurring. They are becoming more able as they enter 
sixth, seventh, eighth grade to become more independent. They want that. In mm -hmm. fact, that can cause some of those issues in your household. They're maybe loading the dishwasher differently than you want to because <laughs> they see it as a better way to do it. And um, there's going to be those questions or those, you could call them clashes, but it's more of just really trying to see how everything fits. And so mm -hmm. academically, we want to help build those independent learners in them. And so like, I love doing that as we um, design curriculum for the kids, because in those middle school years, we want to train them walking through it step-by-step. Step. Here is how you do it in the same way that you would show a child, let's say how to fill a dishwasher. Mm -hmm. you, you do it for them and show them, then you do it with them. And then you let them try a couple times and you give them good feedback and then you're ready to launch and they're going to make mistakes and they're going to put, you know, the non hand washable thing in there and ruin a couple things, but that's a process. And, and it's the same way with learning they're, You're going to give them, sometimes they may have access to solutions manuals mm. or they at least know where they are. And sometimes they may kind of be tempted to find them and use them when you're not aware. And, um, those kind of trial and error, this is the time to be addressing those things lovingly, gently, um, the temptations that they experience in that. They're also spiritually going to be going from following mommy and daddy's beliefs, mm -hmm. belief system to, to making it their own. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to ask questions that might shock us. You know, how come, how is it fair that a person over in wherever is born there and not hearing the gospel like I am? Or, or how do we know that what they're believing is not true what we're believing is true and 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 if you don't know the answer to that that's fine seek out the answer to that with them walk through it. it's not that they're challenging you necessarily they're challenging questions and and we want to walk through that and it's harder um, and that you're going to find that in academics you're going to find that in how the household is run you're going to find those questions but if you have an understanding that this is a child who's maturing. This is a child who's developing and this is expected. We don't want them to be elementary aged in their minds all the way through, right? right. We don't want an 18 year old like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we want them to become thinkers. We want them mm -hmm. to reason and we want them to do it early on like this so that they have the benefit of dialoguing with us, mm -hmm. of having those hard concepts. I saw, you know, we, we started putting our kids in a, a co-op that met one day a week for certain number, certain classes, not all of them, but I wanted my kids to experience external deadlines. Mm. I wanted them to take on that responsibility of communicating to me, well, you know, this is the way this teacher is doing this. And, um, you know, how do I deal with that? Or, or mom, this is not how we're supposed to do it. Okay. Well, let's talk about that. I want them to be able to start navigating that a little bit at a time so that we can, um, walk with them through those harder, concepts or how they manage their time. Let them fail sometimes. Yeah. You know, this is a safe place at home to fail versus a college environment or a career environment where they're, you know, they're not knowing what to do or they fail something and they just fall apart. We can't be, you know, we talk about helicopter parenting. Uh -huh. like a negative. You know, you're all involved in everything. And it's really hard to do as homeschoolers because we know who their friends are. We know what they see, what they do, what they're learning. Mm -hmm. And we, we tend to be helicopter parenting, but we also don't want to be what I've heard um, as lawnmower parents, like just push them on through, just get them going. We don't care what we're mowing over. Let's just get it done and check off the boxes and say we're done. We have to have be somewhere between those two machines. I don't know what we are. I haven't come up with a metaphor for that. <laughs> but, um, it's, it's a, it's a, we, we did it. I, I want to say we did it perfectly, but we did it. We did it very fallibly. We made mistakes. We had lots of times where we would have just, you know, Let's, let's have a family meeting and let's talk about this. Lots of tears, lots of apologies on our part, <laughs> on my part. Um, but it, helping them to see that you're navigating this process with them um, through all of those arenas in their lives helps to build conversation, helps yeah. to open up those doors for talking about those things um, and helps them to identify that, you know, your heart is for them. You want the best for them in the same way that God wants the best for them. And, um, and it helps them to navigate those new experiences. Um, I, I have the blessing. I'm right now working on my master's in education and science design and science curriculum design. And I get the uh, opportunity to talk with lots of teachers in the public school arena. Oh, okay. As a part of this classroom. And it's been so eye-opening to see what um, these dear, dear people have uh, in their hearts for their kids that are in their classrooms and the challenges they face. And most of those who are in middle school in those middle school years are just hitting their heads against the wall mm. because 
They can't influence those kids in the short time they have. They're not the parents. We have that beautiful mm-hmm. blessing of solving that problem of ha- because right. we're home with us. We have those, you know, teachable moments and you, you can't have that quality time without quantity time. Yeah. Because you can't just say, okay, sit down with me and have coffee. We're making this appointment one, you know, one day every month and let's just talk about something important. Go. And they just look at you, you know, it has to happen as, as they, as I mess up, as they mess up and, and those natural conversations occur because you're with them. You're with them all the time. So, yeah, I mean, I, it, I don't know if that help answer some yeah. of this. Oh, it totally does. <laughs> and I, I love so many things that you said, you know, you talk about how they're, they're at that age kind of processing what is truth? What is this life around me? What do I really believe? And yeah. what better way to navigate that with them than to be able to be with them day in and day out? Absolutely. Because we get to see, I mean, you know, no one knows our kids better than we do. No one. They can have teachers and there are teachers, public school, private school, universities. There are teachers who love their students, truly, genuinely love them. Um, but they can't, they just don't have the ability. They don't have the time. They don't have the ability to know our kids the way that we do. And so they cannot walk through them, uh, through life with them and help direct them in every single way. And like you said, just allow them to figure it out. And one of the things you said really struck me as you said it, and it reminded me of um, Ginger Hubbard, if you're familiar with her, she's a sweet, sweet friend of mine. Um, She has a book called Don't Make Me Count to Three, and she talks a lot on parenting. And one of the things that she talks about is do-overs. And we do them with our kids. And so, you know, if your child disobeys and and they, you know, we're talking, you know, a toddler, maybe they, you know, hit their brother or sister because they're mad for whatever reason. Instead of just saying, don't hit your brother and sister and scolding them and then walking away, you show them the right way to act. So let's do it over. If your sister took your toy instead of hitting her, let's figure out the best way to respond to her. And so you take them by the hand and you walk them through how to respond properly. And I, I love that you relate that then back to our children and their life and their education. And that even at the age of 13, 14, 15, you know, 18 years old, we can still take them by the hand and say, let's, let's do this together. I'm going to show you the right way to do it. And then I'm going to let you do it on your own. And you may or may not fail. And if you do, then we're going to do it together again and let them practice, but coming alongside of them, because they think as homeschool moms, oftentimes we just assume that they know how to do things the right way. We assume they know how to write a paper. We assume they know how to do these math problems. We assume that they know how to, uh, you know, make a speech or whatever it is. We just think, well, of course they know how to do it. Well, maybe they don't. And so they need mom to be able to come alongside of them, show them how to do it. Or if we don't know how to do it, find someone else who does like the marine biologist mom. (laughs) And, um, you know, and that, I mean, that's a whole nother topic, but that's the importance of community in homeschooling. You must have community. You must seek out people. Don't wait for people to come to you. You seek out people because there are people who are waiting to be sought out and build community. And then you come alongside one another's children um, as well. And, and, and you do this together, you do this life together and it's such a beautiful yes. thing. And so I love that you talk about that um, as a great way to just transition them. Yeah. Well, and I was understanding also that um, what you do with one kid, you know, you may have, like, we had this phenomenal um, lady that was homeschooler and she, she's great for educating our kids and how to write. And I kept thinking to myself, Oh, please don't retire next year. Oh, please. I've got three (laughs) more kids. Oh, two more kids. And yet you have, we have to realize that, um, I, you know, I really believe God's got his plans for our kids. And, yeah. and so what he makes available for one child, he may not make available for the others, but for his good purposes. And so we can't rely on a curriculum or a human or a friend who's doing something to have to be there for us. As long as we realize that God's got it, you know, I, I can tell you example after example of things he did that with our kids. I mean, one of our children is a musician, full-time musician, mm, it's a living doing it. <laughs> and awesome. I'm thinking to myself, Oh Lord, how is he going to feed my future grandkids? <laughs> but he has had been gifted in that from the beginning mm. and God opened up opportunities beyond what I knew to do Yeah, to give him these experiences that he had during his growing up years to prepare him 
for mm -hmm. what he's doing today that I could not have done. He didn't make those opportunities the same ones available to my other kids. Mm -hmm. It was just, and so I see his hand throughout that. And we have to trust that, um, that that's going to happen too. It's going to look different. And as like you were talking about, you know, the sharing thing or the hitting my child and having them navigator, maybe they don't know how to write a paper. Maybe they did know how to write a paper, but now as a hormonal, <laughs> they don't, or they're questioning it, or they're saying, why do I have to use an L-Y word here? You know, there, there's... <laughs> I mean, it, the gamut there, it's there. Yes. And so we have to walk through them with, through the, the, the questioning season, um, mm -hmm. based on everything they've learned. Why is this called red? Does everybody see the same red that I see? Mm -hmm. And can I call it something else? I mean, they like to challenge because yeah. they're trying to reformat their world with their mature brain. And so, um, the, the, it's just fascinating to see how the brain works and how God and his amazing design coincided those adolescent years with their all of that transition time which yeah. makes it fun for homeschool families uh, what a beautiful reminder um, that <laughs> they're not just crazy <laughs> no you know <laughs> we've all been through it but I think we forget I mean I honestly I remember my junior high years and my high school years but I I don't remember going through the insanity <laughs> that sometimes it seems like, um, you know, these, these kids go through. Um, but I'm, I'm certain I did. I, but I'm sure my mom remembers. I'll have to ask her because <laughs> I'm certain she's got stories. Um, but it's such a good reminder to just show them grace because we were there once too. It's how God created them. They are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing and not to always see it as them challenging us, which I think sometimes we, we always feel like they're, button up against us. They're challenging us. They're being disrespectful. Yeah. And sometimes that's the case. And then we need to redirect them and their attitudes. Um, so, so I'm not giving permission for that, but sometimes they are really just trying to figure out <laughs> what, what this life in this world is all about. Absolutely. Um, so I love your encouragement. Unfortunately, we are out of time for the podcast, but I would actually love to continue this conversation um, for our Backstage Pass members. Um, we, we're trying to keep the podcast at 30 minutes because we, have, we keep surveying people and saying, how long you know, do you like for the podcast? And I mean, hands down, it's always 30 minutes. So we're trying to keep it at 30, but I want to keep talking with you. So um, for those who listen to the podcast, they know we've got the Backstage Pass membership site and um, we put almost all of our videos up on there. So we are videotaping this interview right now. So that will be on the backstage pass. You can see the whole video in its entirety. Um, but for the podcast, um, we've got to close that up right now. Um, for those listening, please leave a review on iTunes. That is a huge, huge benefit to us. Um, we don't ask for that so that we can get a pat on the back and um, feel good about ourselves. It's because it actually helps to get the word out and it um, helps other people to know about the Schoolhouse Talk podcast. So we would love for you to leave a review. If it's a nice review, if you don't have anything nice to say, then <laughs> don't say anything at all. Um, or if you don't have anything nice to say, maybe let us know how we can encourage you and how we can make this podcast better. So um, thank you for listening today. Sherry, where can people find you? Um, I am at, uh, let's see, I have a blog, sherryselligson.com. Okay. Um, on Facebook, Sherry Seligson author. Um, love to engage with families. I'm on Instagram. Other, my first and last name really pretty much everywhere. And then apologia.com is where my materials are and I can be contacted through them as well. So okay. um, yeah, just I'm out there. Love Sounds, to chat. Great. Sounds great. We will link to the, all of those things in the show notes so people can find you there. And thank you so much, Sherry, for your time today. And uh, we will continue this conversation for Backstage Pass members. Great. Okay, so hi Backstage Pass members. Um, I always feel like I have this invisible audience in front of me and it's so much fun because I never know who's on the other side of this screen. Um, but it's always fun to see how many people have actually viewed the videos and um, we're getting more and more views, which is really exciting because it means that people are actually being encouraged by these. And so um, I, I wanted to keep you on because one of the things I want to talk about is I, I want to talk about your personal story of how you became a new believer, you were in pre-med classes at a secular university and you, well, tell, I'm going to let you tell the story. <laughs> I feel like I can tell the story a little bit, but I'm going to let you tell it because it's a pretty neat story. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, 
studying majoring pre-med. I wanted to be a marine biologist, but the school I went to, it, it was actually a small college where Mr. Rogers went, which is interesting. Oh. Um, But yes, um, but it was a a secular college and they didn't offer a marine biology major. So I majored in pre-med. I don't know why I'm crazy, but (laughs) I did um, because I wanted to get a good, actually a good broad education. And um, one of the classes that was a requirement for me to take was a class titled evolution. And so our textbook was Darwin's origin of species. That was the book we used. In fact, the, the, um, and I was a brand new believer. I was 19, um, for reading the Bible for the first time. And for me, I was just eating it up. It was just uh, life. It was life giving. It was, mm-hmm. it was rich. It just was filling me. And so I was, I was in the Bible all the time. And I had this book as a textbook. And the first day of class, the professor said, other than the Bible, what's the one book that has changed how man thinks of the world? And I thought, if you say other than the Bible, aren't you saying the Bible's number one? And you're just right. kind of saying, other than number one, what's yeah. the next number one? <laughs> and I, I questioned him on that and I could tell right away he wasn't happy about it. But um, <laughs> it, it was interesting. It was an interesting experience because I'm reading this book, which um, was quite an interesting book to read, actually, because a majority of Darwin's book explains problems with his theory. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I'm reading this and this is man's ideas of how we came to be without a God. At the same time that I'm reading God's revelation as to how everything came to be by his hand. And so it started me on this um, apologetic journey, why I believe what I believe. Um, because all these smart people, you know, were telling me, well, this is obviously true. Science is saying this, evolution is for sure. And I was like, I don't understand. How can we, how can this be if I believe that God is true? Because I knew in my heart that God created the world. Mm-hmm. And so as I began to learn more about science, as I began to study um, scientific facts, scientific evidences, I started to see evidence of a creator through it. I started to see problems, red flags in evolutionary theory. You know, for example, Darwin didn't understand what a cell was like. In his time period, we really thought of cells as kind of water balloons, just mm-hmm. simple blobs of fluid. And now what we know because of um, molecular biology and, and, and observing cell structure, they're like cities, whole cities with massive, massive um, complex processes. And some cell, like the simplest organism in creation is a bacterium. Bacteria can communicate, bacteria can um, trade information, bacteria can work together to take out a huge organism like me, make me sick. Yeah, right. And so the more we see that, the more we're seeing that there's no simple organism. You know, they, they used to say that life goes from simple to complex. And I love to say that life goes from complex to amazingly or ridiculously complex. Yeah. There's no simple organism. And so when you, when you understand that fact, that scientific fact, it is so difficult to then explain that jump that evolutionists will say began with just some simple molecules that came together. When we see so many elements in creation, um, symbiotic relationships, uh, processes, um, organ systems that have to work together for a dolphin to echolocate. Um, we, we, it, it is impossible. It's difficult, if not impossible, to try to explain via the process of evolutionary theory. And so I, I, re, I remember going working for the first time um, at Disney and working with animals and, and trying to figure out how do you feed these animals who are in the wild in an artificial environment of an aquarium. They had a six million gallon aquarium that all these animals were living in. And I was responsible for the predators and the um, and some other of the other the fish nutrition. And so, you know, in learning their complexities, like we had parrotfish that feed on corals. The corals in the aquarium were fiberglass; they couldn't eat those. So we had to come up with a solution of what to make a you know something similar to a coral. And we used yeah. dental plaster and nutrition. And and when we look at fish nutrition, I was like, this could not have happened yeah. bit by bit through an evolutionary series. And so. The more I saw, the more I was convinced there's a creator. You know, mm-hmm. we, we know that God reveals himself in his word and in his creation. Both of those are revelations of himself. And so we see his fingerprints when we study creation. And, mm-hmm. and that just, you can tell, that gets me super excited. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it's, um, I want students and families to be able to um, not just say, educationally speaking, this is amazing. This is complex. Isn't it cool that God made it? Because that's true. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't it be great for them to be able to understand the mechanics behind it, yeah. to affirm for themselves, 
indeed we have a brain. We've been given an, a brain to study this stuff. Mm -hmm. We have been given the capacity to understand it. And it's a testimony to God when I can say, just look at a lichen. When you talk about a symbiotic relationship between a, a fungus and an alga and how they work together and, and talk like that to someone who doesn't understand mm -hmm. The difference between evolution and creation or a creation a person who's a christian and, and is faltering in their faith because heaven forbid they hear someone you know factually lamb blasting them saying that you're just not thinking mm -hmm. we can be thinkers and we can see god's hand and so that's 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 kind of in a nutshell not a long oh. nutshell of uh, my experience in that arena yeah so how do you think you know you look at people like bill nye the science guy and of course he's the big scientist and he, he'll debate Ken Ham till he's blue in the face and he will just say, no, this all happened by chance. We do not have a, a creator. How does someone like him who really does understand science, and I know you can't speak for him, but in your experience, because obviously you've been in the science world, so you've met many scientists, I'm certain, who are not believers and who reject the truth. What do you think is going through their mind? Are they just in rebellion to God's truth? And, and are their hearts just so hardened or do they genuinely believe that there is no creator? You know, it's, it's interesting. The creation evolution debate, in my opinion, is a worldview versus worldview debate to the mm -hmm. point that um, this is a hard issue. This is a spiritual argument. Yeah. This is um, because a true scientist will say, what does the evidence show? And then take that evidence and make, you know, make an interpretation. The interpretation is the part that we can discuss. The interpretation mm -hmm. is, is how you believe it, how you, you know, interpreted this, how I interpreted this, and there should be flexibility as, you know, I'm talking pure science, not uh, the, so what we're seeing is evolutionists who are taking data and making their conclusion saying, well, therefore there is no God. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, therefore there is a God. And so we should be able to intelligently discuss this, but too often when I'm talking with scientists who believe in evolution, um, they're unwilling to go further and talk about about um, some of the issues with evolutionary theory, which is why they change the definition of evolution every couple of years, because we find issues. Um, and, and God's word never changes. <laughs> God's word never changes, yes. And so it's, it's a hard issue. And, and ultimately, I think they have to face, if there is a God, I have to bow the knee before him. Mm -hmm. and, and that means I have to change the way I want to live. That's right. Um, and whereas, you know, obviously their understanding is, I mean, because bowing the knee before him is a freedom. It's a beauty. It's mm -hmm. a wonderful thing. It's not a, a shackles. Right. Um, and so we need to help them see that. But I think that's what the wrestling is because, you know, I don't believe we're ever going to be able to prove scientifically that God exists. I, I know that there's an element of faith that God wants mm -hmm. us to have. And Absolutely. so we shouldn't be endeavoring to go, to go there, right. but we should be endeavoring to have intelligent conversation mm -hmm. with these, um, with other people about this topic. And, and I can concede that I, there, there's not enough scientific evidence to prove God exists, mm -hmm. but there's not enough scientific evidence to prove he does not. And, mm -hmm. and I believe that, that that jump of faith comes when you see so many evidences, not to mention God, you know, Holy Spirit working in your heart, sure. which is the ultimate reason, but we can reconcile that. We should not be afraid of, of studying science, of studying our world. God made us that way. Mm -hmm. God had, had Adam classify the animals. That's classification. That's biology. I can like name all the sciences involved in, in Eden. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it, it's just, it's, it's, um, I just think that at, the, at some point their hearts are hardened. So, so Bill Nye, I don't know the man, I've never met him. Um, and so I don't know what he's thinking, but when he gets adamant and vehement and, and, mm -hmm. and almost angry, I can, it, it looks to me as if there's a struggle inside that there's no way this can be yeah. because otherwise I'm going to have to bow down before a Lord. Mm -hmm. And so that's, yeah. that's my understanding, at least experience with other scientists sure. as well. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, you know, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We were just talking about that in our family devotions this morning mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks, the truth of the matter is every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And we are all going to come face to face with our God. And, you know, I never want God to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Um, yes. You know, and like I said, it's, I mean, it's hard to, it, it's hard to grasp the, the awesomeness and, and the majesty of his creation. <laughs> I know. Because it's so big. 
it, yes. it's so big. You talk about the cell. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just, it, it's amazing what, what we continue to discover. And that's the amazing thing is that we continue to discover every day more and more of his creation, yeah, which I think to him. just points to him, just makes mm-hmm. us realize more and more that, that we have a, a great creator. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. What as homeschool parents, um, and especially, you know, we were talking earlier about transitioning our kids in, from elementary into the middle school years and into the high school years. And as they are starting to ask those questions of, who am I? Is God real? Is the Bible real? How did I actually get here? What is my purpose in life? What are some things that, that are, um, and I'm not asking for curriculum specifically, and we can actually talk about that because I know you've written some great curriculum. Um, you work with Apologia and you're... Um, you're about to publish a new um, curriculum, right? That's, that's going to come mm-hmm. out soon. Yes. Um, so I want to talk about that too. But what are some ways that we can very practically help lead our children in the way of truth? Maybe some, some books that you can recommend. Um, obviously, God's word. <laughs> um, yes. But what are some ways that we can help our kids, um, especially for those of us who are not scientists and do not have scientific minds like yourself? Yeah, I think... Um we need to be seeking um, opportunities to have these discussions with them. And so I, I, um, without talking about specific curriculums, I mean, really there's, there's a bunch of great organizations. I guess I would talk about those. I mean, Ken Ham's organization, Answers mm-hmm. in Genesis, Creation Ministries International, mm-hmm. um, Apology Educational Ministries. Um, there are many, Institute for Creation Research. A lot of these organizations are creation-based organizations that have materials from a scientific standpoint that um, help ask those hard questions. Why I believe what I believe. Um, what is science showing? And, and, um, and so those are, those are great places to start on their websites. Most of them, if not all of them, I believe, have materials for young children, materials for middle school age children, materials for adult age children. Um, aside from that, and, if, and you know, a lot of parents don't feel equipped even at that point to, you know, if you just throw a book at a kid and say, please read it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's good. Um, but to be able to be exposed to those who can help walk them through that process mm-hmm. can help dialogue about that. So I, I encourage you to, like you were saying, there's, there's so, so it's such a, so important to look for people in your community and your homeschool arena. And sometimes, you know, via this arena, like it, ha- it may be electronically. That's one of the blessings we can use technology for um, online, in, you know, connections and online discussions that um, help students to work through those processes of, you know, questions that, that you may not be able to fully answer, but not be afraid of it. I think that's the biggest thing mm. is to not, we, that fear that we have that, oh no, what if they discover something that does prove that, you know, evolution happened? I, you know, if we truly believe the Bible is truth, if we believe that God is who he is, then we should be bold uh, just because some guy with a goatee and a lot of letters after his name and a British mm-hmm. accent says he didn't. Um, that doesn't mean that, that person's correct. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think that that's, that's a, a challenge we have in our church. You know, the churches are not going there with their, with mm-hmm. their youth or with their, even the adults, mm-hmm. the adults don't know what to do. And we're getting lamb blasted, yeah. you know, global warming and this, and, you know, man versus animals and, and, you know, we're no different than the bug crawling on the, you know, the seashore um, in value. And, you know, when we see that we're created in God's image, um, we do have a value that's unique mm-hmm. to the other organisms. And, and it affects what we think, what we do, how we live. It is not just a, you got to get a good grade in science. I know there's many students that aren't direct science directed, mm-hmm. but all students are human beings. And so all of us would benefit from knowing how our bodies work. Mm-hmm. Um, all, you know, as a mom, it's been helpful to know, you know, what a fever is and how, how you know, how to help that address that. Um, it, it's, and of course, again, it, it gives us affirmation of our faith to know why we believe what we believe. So those are some sources or some locations mm-hmm. for sources that you can go to at least to get started to maybe answer some questions. What about the dinosaurs? What mm-hmm. about, you know, those, those, those classic, um, yeah. creation evolution questions, what separates man from the animals? Perfect illustration. Um, watching a sunset on the beach. Whenever we hang mm. out at the beach, we spend and eat, you know, we, we make a point. We grab at something ice cold, we go to the shore and we watch the sunset. And, we, and I started noticing a lot of people do that because we love watching all the beautiful colors of the sunset. And then I realized, you know, the dolphins aren't poking their heads out to watch this. The squirrels aren't mm-hmm. stopping to do this. The animals are not pausing to say, 
wow, look at that beauty. That's because they don't have the capacity to do that. It's yeah. not evolutionary beneficial. Right. To have their understanding <laughs> of beauty. And so why do we have this capacity to understand that? Because God designed beauty. God mm-hmm. designed that, that magnificence, that poetic, you know, makes you want to write a poem kind of a feeling right. in us because that's who he is in his poetic word. And so we're made in his image. We're unique. We're different than mm-hmm. animals. And there's lots right. of other areas that separate us from animals so that that will affect how we make our legislation, how we live our lives. And so um, it's out there. It's available. There are many, many amazing people who have um, opportunities and their desire to speak to your kids. And so seek it out. Um, don't ignore it. Just because you don't like science doesn't mean yeah. it's not it. so. Well, we're very grateful for people like yourself who um, God has created to be a scientist. And so you can come alongside of us and help us to learn it. Because when kids understand, especially when they understand his creation in the form of how they were made, Mm-hmm. And I say it all the time on the podcast, but you know, we tell our girls all the time they were made on purpose and for a purpose. And yes. God's word tells us that. And when they think that they're created from nothing and that they have no purpose in life, you know, it, I mean, you look at what's happening in our culture today with um, the whole abortion movement. And it, it breaks my heart because I was talking to my girls about this the other day and I, I, and I was saying, you know, we need to feel sorry for those people who are making these decisions because they themselves don't understand their value in Christ. They do not understand their worth on this earth. And so how can they understand the value of a, an unborn baby when they don't get it themselves? And, and it's, it's heartbreaking, but I want my girls to know that they are valued and they are, God has created them so intricately and so beautifully and with special gifts and talents and abilities. And he's created their body to work a certain way because he has a purpose for them in his world. Yes. There's no greater thing. There's nothing else that matters than for them to impact God's kingdom and to love God until the day they die. And, um, and science draws them to that. Science helps them to understand who they are as humans. And, you know, that, that like you said, we're not animals. We're created completely differently than them. Yeah. And they don't have a soul. They can't surrender their heart to Jesus and say, you know, God, what can I do for you? And, um, what a beautiful thing. So really quickly, we have a couple more minutes left. Um, talk about the new project that you have coming out um, through Apologia. Yeah, we have a uh, new general science course. It's officially seventh grade, okay. and it is um, designed to take students from our elementary courses into their middle school and upper school sciences. It is completely redone from our original edition in that we are going to walk students. It's first of all, it's a true general science course. There's a lot of earth science in there, um, which, which helps fill in a science gap, I believe, that um, was missing in this course, and I wanted to put that in. But it also covers all of the sciences in a uh, beautifully, intricately, uh, step-by-step way. And then we take the kids through, step-by-step, how to do a lab how to write a lab, do a lab write-up. We actually highlight words in the text saying, look back at those, those colored letters there. That's the information you want to be pulling as you write your lab write-up. It should look like this. It should sound like this. We walk them through the process of creating a graph step by step because okay. that's an inherent part of, of science and, and, and planning their materials. The first two um, chapters are open book tests because we want to walk them through that process. We are assuming they've had no official science background, which is fine because I believe all kids are science scientists and study on their own as they're young, but we want them to appreciate it. And we begin with a history of science and help them to see how God has used great individuals, uh, Christians um, in history who desire to know more about God by studying his word, by, by looking at his creation and seeing evidences of him. And then we end the course with another chapter that um, highlights scientists who are working today, modern scientists in their field, in all of the fields of science that we cover in the course, who give their testimony of how they see God today. And oh, so it's wow. kind of bookended. And um, we have a really fun, the last chapter is a really short chapter that they get to utilize all the scientific concepts that they have learned through the year. And they make their own Rube, Rube Goldberg machine, which is really kind of a fun, you know, the little dominoes that fall and knock the ball into this. Yeah. Oh, how so, fun. It's really fun. It's engaging. It's designed to be done four days a week instead of five. It's meant to be a smaller length of time, but still very, um, 
very solid science in an engaging way. Lots of hands-on activities, lots more than our upper level courses because we know those little ones or younger mm -hmm. ones see better as they're uh, trying to develop those, um, nice. not con that they're concrete, but they're looking at abstract eventually. So we have lots of hands-on to reach those different types of learning styles and their ability and their, and their, um, development. So it has been, it's, and we also have included an instructional DVD course oh, okay, that, uh, cool. or video course that takes them through, instructs them section by section. Oh, I love it. Um, I'm the one that's doing it. So, nice. <laughs> but we, we take, we got, um, we had the opportunity to go lots of places um, and show them what we're talking about. So we're talking about oh. bacteria. I went to New Zealand and was able to go to where the rifts are and we could see the steam, wow. steam coming out and, um, we have video from uh, Colorado and from California and Iceland. Um, I think we included some video from um, Africa this year. But anyway, um, we want them to see it. It's real. Yeah. It's out there. It's not just a picture. Um, here is where we're seeing science in our in our globe. And so, um, just to keep them engaged, to get them excited, because I'm excited about science. Yeah, about that so, is so cool. Is it a yeah. self-directed curriculum, or is it one that mom needs to? It is completely self-directed. Okay, the student, wow. The student notebook has day by day what the students should be doing already laid out for them. They check off the box as they go. Um, all of the test answers have not just yes or no as the solution for the moms to check or the dads mm -hmm. to check. Uh, it has yes and then why it is yes. So they can explain here's why okay. you had, you know, so that it is mom and dad don't have to know anything about science. Mm -hmm. And we are walking students through the process to become independent so that hopefully by their, you know, their second, third, fourth chapter, they're like, I got this mom, I got yeah. it. And so um, that's our goal. We want them to take ownership. We want them to um, become, we want to work ourselves out of a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's my hope that this course will help do that. So, okay. Oh, that's yeah. great. And so you said this is a middle school course. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and when is it rolling out? Do you know? It is available for, I believe, pre-order starting today, uh, today, as a matter of fact. Okay. Um, and it can, I think it's going to be done, um, available to actually have in hand, um, within the next month or two. It's, it's, okay. it's at the printers. That's the best way I can okay. say right now. So, okay. And what it is it will, called? So if people want to look for it. Exploring creation with general science. Okay, great. So Apology Educational Ministries is the one that is producing that. Okay, great. Um, I'm writing that down. Yes. General science. Okay, and, and we'll, of course, put links to that so people can find that. But that sounds fantastic. Um, you know, I don't always need curriculum that's always completely self-directed, but it's helpful sometimes, <laughs> um, especially in this season that we're in. Um, sure. And so, yeah, that's, that is great. And I don't know, I don't know or remember a whole lot about science. So um, I don't even know how I got through science in school, except that <laughs> <laughs> one, one of my teachers was one of my best friend's dads. So maybe that's how I got through. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but, um, anyway, well, thank you, Sherry. You have been such a blessing and such an encouragement. Um, I love it. Tell me again, just for those watching the video, where people can find you. Okay, SherrySelligson.com um, is okay. my blog site. Um, I'm much more responsive and always, not always, but most of the time on Facebook. So you can find me at okay. Sherry Seligson Author um, on Facebook and Instagram, Sherry Seligson. So I'm out there. Okay, that sounds great. We'll link back to those. And thank you again. You're such a blessing. It's been so much fun talking to you. And, uh, I've enjoyed it. And those watching on Backstage Pass, thank you guys so much. We love you guys. You are a great blessing and encouragement to us as well. So have an awesome rest of your day, and we will talk to you guys later.